consecutive Big Ten title and the program's first national championship since 1997. Coach Moore, welcome, and we'll begin with your opening statement. Awesome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, very humbled and excited to be here to represent the great University of Michigan, our football program, our players, our coaches, our staff. Uh, what an unbelievable job by Team 144, but we're ready uh, for Team 145 to take the reins. Um, really excited to be here in Lucas Oil Stadium, uh, a place we, we look forward to trying to strive to end the regular season here. Humbly blessed to be able to hear be here the past couple years and uh, look forward to, to working our process to continue to do the same. We're here with three outstanding young men, leaders on and off the field for us. Bakari Page, safety. Max Bredesen, tight end fullback. And Donovan Edwards, running back. All three of these guys have made tremendous plays on the football field for us the past three years and look to do the same this year. But more importantly, elite people elite students, and game changers off the field. Uh, Team 145 has really done a really good job up to this point and taken the necessary steps to be elite, to do all the things that we set out to do. Win the big games, beat our rivals, beat Ohio State. Win the Big Ten, go to the college football playoff, and win it. For us, that's something we strive to do. Tough, smart, Dependable, relentless, enthusiastic, and together is how I describe our team. We're going to do everything we can to strive for perfection. Everything we, day, everything we do every day is a process, and we'll continue to strive to do that. And we'll continue to do that with contagious enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Look forward to hearing the questions. Coach, we got first row right in front of you here. Hello, Coach. Uh, Nick on? Hamilton, Nightcast Media. Uh, wanted to just ask you, obviously, coming off a national championship, you, go, you guys go from the, hunted, the hunters to being the hunted. How do you adjust that mentality now that you all are the hunted to be able to achieve your goals and be able to um, go further in, uh, during the season? Yeah, for us, it's about getting better every day, and we're always hunting. Regardless if uh, people are coming after us, we're coming after them. So for us... We're not in the mentality of sitting back and waiting to see what goes on. We're going to attack our process. We're going to work our tails off to make sure we're doing the best things we can possible the way we know to be, be, to be successful. On your back left in the back row. Tom Crawford, press pass, Fox 47 Lansing. Sharon, appropriate question for you, offensive line. Obviously a, a position of strength last year. You lose all five guys plus one. Yet this year's offensive line, a lot of high expectations. Curious to know what keeps you awake at night, what excites you the most, particularly at the tackle position. Yeah, the thing that keeps me awake at night the most is my four-year-old daughter kicking me in my back. Uh, <laughs> but besides that, you know, just making sure that our culture, that our alignment stays the same. Our players have done an outstanding job of keeping the culture, keeping the togetherness, the brotherhood. And really, it's, it's, it's an testament to them. You know, bringing in the right staff was, was a huge piece for us, bringing in the right people. Uh, Coach Newsom has done an unbelievable job mentoring and, and leading our offensive linemen. And all those players have really taken the reins. They've seen what it looks like, what it feels like what it means to practice that way for us to be really good up front. So, you know, being the head coach, obviously having the offensive line background, I'm going to take a lot of pride in making sure that line is ready to go when we hit game one. Second row on your right side, Coach. Hey, Coach, Will Decker, LA Football Network. I'm not going to ask you to name a quarterback, but I was wondering if you could tell me about Alex, Jack, and Davis and what makes them all viable options to be the starter uh, come week one. I mean, all those guys – uh, have all the attributes you need to be a, a successful starting quarterback at the University of Michigan and a lot of other universities. And we're super blessed to have all those guys. Um, everybody has their own traits and their own things that make them a little different. But I think the number one thing we're looking for out of any guy that is our starting quarterback is one, that they're a playmaker, that they can make plays, uh, that they'll make, they'll make the right decision, they'll take care of the football, and that they want to win, and they'll do anything for the team to win. So. Really, we're going to look for those attributes and then go from there. In the back, Coach, slight left. Hi, Sean. Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. 
you hired Tony Alford away from Ohio State and then later Aaron Dunstan. Can you kind of talk about that process and what they bring to you guys? Yeah, I mean, talk about two outstanding individuals, people, uh, well-rounded, well-educated, well-trusted, people that, um, you know, have known Tony for a very long time and had a, a tremendous amount of respect for him and what he's done in the business. And Aaron, not as much, but heard tremendous things about her and just want great people in our program. You know, great mentors of, of young men that are going to lead our players to a great place. Uh, so that was really the, the backing behind that and uh, excited to, to watch their work as we go through the future. First row on your right side. Heather Dinich with ESPN. From the outside looking in with the coaching changes and particularly on offense, this team looks vastly different than the one that won the national title. From where you sit, how closely does your team resemble a national title contender again? Yeah, I think every year for us, Heather, our, our goal is to win that. We're not, we're not going to stray away from the goal of trying to win it all every year. Um, at, when you're at Michigan, that should be your goal every single year. For our team, you know, it'll take shape in training camp, and then it'll take shape in game one and game two to see where we're at. Uh, feel very confident about our team, very excited about our team. Every team is different. You know, team 142, three and four, they're all different. So excited to see where 145 is. In the far back, coach. Sharon. Pete Nakos from On3, hope you're doing well. Great. Talking about the quarterbacks, what is the timeline of trying to prepare, for, obviously, for the season and naming a starter? Do you expect it to carry over into the season? And, and what is your ideal timeline when, when making that decision? Yeah, I think the ideal timeline is when we feel like we got the guy that's going to help us win. There's not really a date. It's not really a time. Uh, we'll have a good feel as a staff. we got really good coaches. Kirk Campbell's a phenomenal, phenomenal coach. He's going to do an outstanding job with our offense. So uh, I know he's going to make a, a great decision, and we'll be there uh, to make it together. Coach, first row on your right side. Uh, Kenneth Berry, touchdowns and tangents. Coach, obviously fresh off a of national title season. Pretty much it's, it's all your staff now. In regards to just how you approached developing your coaches, picking your coaches, um, how, was that more difficult compared to, you know, having to take over in the interim? And as one of the leading coaches and leading African-American coaches in the country, uh, what does it say to you in this conference, knowing that most of the coaches in this conference that are African-American have been leading the way? Yeah, I think as far as picking the coaches, uh, it, was a, it was a process that we really had, I really had to go through and take my time with it and some happened a little faster than others and feel like we got the right mix, right group of people to lead our program. Number one, they had to be great people, uh, then great teachers and people that cared about our student athletes in a great way and feel like we got that in, uh, with all our staff members. And as, as far as uh, our conference again, and, and I like to thank Ward Manuel, uh, President Ono for the opportunity to be the head coach at Michigan. It's a humble blessing, first African-American head coach at Michigan, it's a blessing. And, uh, you know, I think it's awesome. But it also shows that every young man, regardless of your color of your skin, wherever you're from, you can do whatever you want. You know, don't, let allow, don't allow people to tell you that you can't do something if you want to go do it. You know, go take the opportunity and go strive to be great. Third row on your right side, Coach. Hi, Coach. Jonathan Rhodes, Voice of College Football. You've now made a change from offensive line coach and offensive coordinator to the head coach. What major adjustment are you making personally to keep the championship caliber program where it's at? I mean, the, the number one thing I did is bring in the right staff, bring in the right people around our players. Um, I've got to be a better delegator, and I think I've tried to do that as fast as I can. But for me, it's leaning on those mentors that I've had in the past, those people like Coach Harbaugh, uh, talking to him, understanding how he, you know, how he built this program and being blessed, uh, blessed enough to be here for the last six years, uh, it's been phenomenal for me. So for me now, it's putting my own flavor on it, uh, but not changing too much because obviously there's a lot of things that worked. But anything we can do to get better every single day, we're going to try to do. Coach Moore, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Go Blue.